Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study today. Thank you for all the workers in this church, for security brethren, for ushers, for youth choir, for adult choir, orchestra, and for the coordinators and zona leaders, women reps, women coordinators, for the interpreters, everyone. Lord, we thank you for the commitment. And we thank you for uh, the goodness we see in their lives. And we pray, O oh Lord, in any way we have mistakenly accused anyone wrongfully, forgive us in Jesus' name. And we pray, O oh Lord, that the balm of Gilead will be in the hearts of all our leaders and workers. Anybody that has been embarrassed unnecessarily and uh, wrongly accused, comfort them in Jesus' name. I pray that and they will forget the past and just serve you as if nothing happened to them in the past in Jesus name lead us and teach us your word today thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name we pray in our study of the Bible we're now in the a book of Joel we've been looking at this book and we're now in study 6 today we're in chapter 2 verses 18 through to 27 and here in this passage, actually the Lord is talking about restoration. And he's giving the children of Israel, the people of Judah, he's giving them hope. And it's the present and the future hope of multiplied, multiple blessings. And you will see from the very language of the passage as we begin to read, that the Lord just said he was going to fully restore everything he had taken away, he was going to restore to them. Here there is a promise of full restoration after full repentance. The Lord in his mercy, in his love, in his power. He promised to remove the northern army, that is, the agents of destruction and devastation. He also promised to restore all the blessings they had lost. As we look at the whole passage, reading from verse 18 to verse 27, you will see this, it says, Then will the Lord Pity is people, is the language of promise. And the Lord will answer. In another verse it says, I will send corn, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. I will remove far off from you the northern army. The Lord will do great things. He will do it for you. He will cause to come down for you the rain. Then he says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. And then he says, my people, the people of God shall never be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. But I, I need to tell you that in the divine economy, repentance brings restoration. Full repentance brings full restoration. True repentance brings true restoration to the favor of God. And then as we start in verse 18, please look at it, Joel chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. That's what then actually marks the time. I said it before, and we need to say it again. It's, it's a word that is telling you, this will happen, this will happen. After that, then this is what I will do. That makes connection, obviously, to the previous verses in verses 12 to 17. Because it's after those things have taken place that he now says in verse 18, this is what I will do. In verse 18, it says, therefore now also. It says, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for his gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness. And he repented him of the evil. Then he says, blow the trumpet in verse 15 in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that saw. And then he says, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet let the priests the ministers of the lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people o lord give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them wherefore should they say among the people where is their god then will the lord be jealous for the land and pity his people you can see the flow of the passage 
is saying the Lord requires repentance. And it is after that repentance, the restoration of the blessings of God will come upon the people of God. And as you look throughout your Bible, you will find that this message of repentance actually continues. It wasn't only Joel, it wasn't only Isaiah, it wasn't only Jeremiah, not only Ezekiel calling upon the people, repent. In fact, when John the Baptist started his ministry, you know the way he started? He started with the word of repentance. And then Jesus came on. And what did Jesus do? He began to preach repentance as well. And as you look at the beginning of the New Testament, and you go on through to the end of the New Testament, there is just one word that comes to you across all the time. It's the word repent. Look at your Bible. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All that the children of Israel were looking for were the coming kingdom. The deliverance, the freedom, the provision, the abundance, the joy, the peace, and all the goodness of the Lord, the inheritance in the kingdom. That kingdom is at hand. If that kingdom is going to come upon you, and the goodness of the Lord, and the restoration of what the children of Israel lost, when the kingdom of Israel was divided, if you are going to have that restoration, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he tells us in Mark, Mark chapter 1, here is Jesus still emphasizing the same thing in verse 15, Mark chapter 1, and saying, the time is fulfilled. They have been looking for the Messiah that will deliver them from the hands of the Roman government. They have been looking for this uh, son of man that will come and then dominion will be given. Unto, they have been looking for this Messiah upon him, upon his shoulders, will be that kingdom. Now Jesus told them, that, that time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. And what are we to do to welcome that kingdom? Repent ye and believe the gospel. Eventually the children of Israel rejected the Messiah. They rejected the king and therefore they lost the kingdom. But then Jesus told his own disciples to go to the Gentiles so that what the Jews lost, the Gentiles will receive. How will the Gentiles receive that? Matthew chapter 20, uh, Luke chapter 24. In Luke chapter 24, verse 47. And that repentance and the remission of sins shall be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You see that again? If the Gentiles are going to have what those uh, Jews had lost, there is just one way. There must be repentance. It's the emphasis that uh, Joel had. It's the emphasis that John the Baptist had. It's the emphasis that Jesus had. It's the emphasis you find all throughout the New Testament as well. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. Verse 30. And at times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. All men everywhere to repent. As we're told in the gospel, so we're told in the history of the church. That's the Acts of the Apostles. And then we're also told in the epistles in Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and the forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. You see that emphasis as you come to the uh, epistles to you, it's still the same thing, the goodness of the Lord. Has he healed you? Has he delivered you? Has he provided for you? Has he done something for you? He, he does that as a deposit in your life, telling you that the goodness of the Lord is to lead you to repentance. If he can do this for you before repentance, how much more will he do for you after repentance? In 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering towards what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. And there are many people that have lost out on the message of repentance. They don't preach repentance anymore. And they say we're on this side of the cross. We're on this side of Pentecost. And because we're on this side of Pentecost, repentance is no more necessary. Listen, Jesus went to heaven. And right from heaven, the risen Christ the glorified Christ, the exalted Christ. He sent a message down from heaven to the churches in Asia Minor. 
And what was the message you were still giving them in Revelation chapter 2? Verse 5. Revelation 2 verse 5. Remember therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove the candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. And to the church of Laodicea, who didn't know that they needed any spiritual help, any grace, and they thought they had everything, I'm rich, increased with goods, have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. The Lord sent a message unto them in verse 19, chapter 3, Revelation. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Come back to Joel. You will see then that the message of Joel is not outdated. It's not something we should forget. It's not something we should just throw overboard and say, that's Old Testament, repentance is no more necessary. Now Joel told them that if they will repent, then the Lord will restore unto them all the good, good things, and he began to give them promises. And these are the things we're looking at today in Joel chapter 2, verses 18 to 27. We're dividing the study to three parts. Number one, God's power over the northern army. God's power over the northern army. Number two, God's promise of nourishing abundance. Number three, God's people shall never be ashamed. Amen. Amen. Number one, God's power over the northern army. Please let's read in Joel chapter 2. Reading from verse 18 then, will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people? He says, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil. And then he says, Ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. He says in verse 20, But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and is in the part toward the uttermost sea and his thing shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things and the great thing said there is that he destroyed judah he captured judah and it's talking about babylon actually and it's talking about the chaldeans the babylonians that oppressed the children of Israel, the people of Judah, very terribly. And a lot said, because you see, Babylon was the northern part of uh, the northern uh, place of, uh, of Israel, of Judah. That's why it's referred to you as the northern army. But to see the promise of the Lord there, what the Lord said he will do. Uh, look at verse 18 for him to start with. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Uh, the word jealous there, the picture that the Lord is giving us here, it is just figurative. It's an allusion to our husband, to that of the husband who is jealous on account of the reproach or the dishonor against the wife. And what happens here is like a husband had misunderstanding with the wife. And therefore the husband drove uh, the wife away. And then there were people that couldn't insult that wife before. Now they insulted her until the husband felt the insult and was jealous over the wife. And then called back the wife to defend the wife, to protect the wife, and to restore the wife. Almighty God said, I am married unto you, the people of Judah, the people of Israel. But because of their sin, they were cast off and they were sent to captivity. And the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, they oppressed them. They did a lot of bad, bad things to them until even God himself, he felt the oppression, the affliction, the insult done unto Israel is pride. That's why he said, I'm jealous over them now. I'm going to pity them. And the psalmist tells us, like a father pities his children. Even so, the Lord pities them that fear him. As you look at this power of God that says he will restore all things. You see, this comes after the priests and the ministers of the Lord and the elders and the congregation have fully repented as God demanded in the earlier verses I read to you. Then the Lord said, I'm going to restore temporal blessings, material blessings, and I'm going to deliver my people from their strong oppressors. It was a manifestation of God's mercy 
and God's compassion for his people. It always follows repentance and supplication prayer unto the Lord. And let's see these uh, things that the Lord said he will do. It wasn't only in Joel, he said he will do that in Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Here we're reading from verse 13. Isaiah 42. Verse 13, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. The enemies of the people of God are the enemies of God. That's why I said he'll prevail against his enemies. I've long holding my peace. I've been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a traveling woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste the mountains and the hills and dry up all their herbs. And then he says, I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. Then in verse 16, and I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and the crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and will not forsake them. And those were the promises that the Lord was giving to his people. They had been oppressed and he said, I've been holding my peace and I sat still as if I wasn't concerned. But I'm concerned, he said. And now he says, I'm going to lead them like blind people. By the way that they didn't know, I'm going to do good unto them. You see, the Lord is so happy when his people repent. And when that repentance comes, God can promise anything and everything. In Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1. Verse 14. It says, so... The angel of uh, so the Lord, so the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy, and I am very so displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they held forward the affliction. God was saying, I was just a little bit displeased. I was a little bit angry, unhappy with the people of Jerusalem and with Judah. And then the heathen, they took claws into their hands and they oppressed my people. He said, I'm jealous over them now. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. You will see the promise of the Lord here. He was saying that his goodness and his mercy and his kindness, his loving kindness was upon them again. He was going to do great, great things for them again. Cry yet in verse 17 saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My city through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. All these things the Lord is promising Remember, we're studying it because the Lord is promising them to you. Things will change. Negative things will get out of your life. And if you have been suffering under any affliction, the mercy of the Lord will come upon you in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 31. Look at this. Jeremiah chapter 31. Reading from verse 20. You need to read this. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I speak against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says the Lord. Uh, do you see that? If uh, the Lord has rebuked Jerusalem, if the Lord had rebuked Ephraim, he said, he's still my dear son. Is a pleasant child. Then he said, even since he spoke against him, he was still earnestly remembering him still. Now he said, my bowels are even moved. And he says, I'm going to come upon him with mercy. Surely I'm going to have mercy upon him. And that's the way of the Lord. That's how the Lord acts. And that's how he still wants to act in our life today. Come back to Joel. In Joel chapter 2. You see the details of what the Lord promised them. First of all, he said, the Lord will be jealous for his land. And then he said, he'll pity his people. That means he'll be so concerned 
if you are bowed down with sorrow and then he said in verse 19 yea the lord will answer when you pray and he will say behold i will send you calm when he says he will answer what does that mean it's a response to verse 17 where it says why should they say among the heathen among the gentiles among the people where is their god then the lord says in verse 19 the lord will answer and he will say to his people behold i will send you corn and wine and oil and ye shall be satisfied therewith the lord will satisfy you and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. How about the oppressors? How about the, the destroyers? How about the devastators? That's in verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. And I will drive him into a land barren and desolate. He said, all the oppressors he will cast away from them. And then the Lord himself will have mercy on them in uh, we now go to point number two god's promise of nourishing abundance what do you from verse 21 of joel chapter 2 it says fear not O land be glad and rejoice for the lord will do great things be not afraid ye beasts of the field for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree beareth her fruit the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. You'll see verse 21 is uh, spoken in the present tense. As if it's done already. Because the Lord was determined he was going to do it. He used the future tense in verse 21. The Lord will do great things. And then he began doing it immediately. And then he said, be not afraid. Because it's coming even now. And this is what's already happening. And then in verse 23, be glad then. Ye children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. In verse 24, and the floors shall be full of wheat. And the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. In these verses that we have read together now, the children of Zion, the sons and the daughters, they were called upon to rejoice and to be glad on account of the coming deliverance and the promised provision of abundance. God promised to restore, and not just to the extent of bare necessity, but the Lord promised that he will restore a full and abundant measure. The Father of mercies, the giver of every good and perfect gift will satisfy them with all temporal and spiritual blessings. In fact, he says the people, even though in their state of backsliding, they had suffered severely. Now, in their state of repentance and obedience, they were to be blessed abundantly. Can't you see how the Lord repeatedly said, fear not, be glad, rejoice. He repeated again, be not afraid, be glad, rejoice in the Lord your God. He was telling them, instead of the sadness that had occupied their hearts, occupied their homes, occupied their streets, all these years, now there will be gladness because the blessings of the former and the latter rain will be coming in the right measure and at the suitable season. And that's the same thing the Lord is telling God's people today. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, the problem we have is that when God has forgotten the very past, the sorrow and the anguish and the chastisement and the Chaldeans and everything, we still remember. That's why he's saying he wants to do a new thing. And we shall forget the former things and instead of still carrying ourselves about and being sorrowful and, and being sad, he says, lift up your heads. Fear not, be not afraid, be glad and rejoice because the Lord is ready is about to do great things in the midst of his people. In Jeremiah chapter 33, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, call unto me and I will answer thee, he will answer you. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Oh, what a wonderful thing the Lord is saying to his people. He says, hey, whatever the people of Judah, whatever they had suffered, you need to read this in connection with the prophecy of Jeremiah himself. Because Jeremiah spoke much about the captivity in, in Babylon. He spoke very much about the yoke that was coming upon the people of Judah. But eventually he said, 
and nothing is impossible for God. If the people of God will repent, then you will call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things, even things that you have not known. In Isaiah chapter 51, Isaiah chapter 51, reading there from verse 1, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Do you follow after righteousness? I said, do you follow after righteousness? And as the promise is given you, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are dig. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. The reason God called Abraham and Sarah is because he wanted to bless him. And he wanted to increase him. And the reason the Lord has called you, you might not have seen the blessing yet much. You might not have seen the increase much. But it's coming. Because the purpose why he called you, why he called us, is so that he will bless us. And he will increase us. I want you to underline the word there. I called him alone. Alone. Sometimes, from your family, he called you alone. And you are saying, it kind of feels lonely. Because I'm the only one in our family that is called. Yes, but the blessing of God is there. And when the people, your people, when they see the blessing of God upon you and the increase of the Lord upon you, they will come and join you. In verse 3, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make her, her wilderness like Eden. Wonderful. And a desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein thanksgiving and the voice of melody in ezekiel chapter 34 you need to see something here please open ezekiel chapter 34 ezekiel 34 reading from verse 24 ezekiel 34 reading from verse 24 and i the lord will be their god and my servant david a prince among them i the lord have spoken it and I will make them a covenant of peace. There will be peace in your family. There will be peace in your local church. I'll make them a covenant of peace. I will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. They will leave you alone. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Verse 26. It is where we got that song. Look at it. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. Everybody read this with me. And there shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. In chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36, the Lord is just heaping promises and promises, blessings of him blessings upon the children of Israel in chapter 36 of Ezekiel verse 8 but ye O mountain of Israel ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel for they are at hand to come and then in verse 30 you see how the Lord is just talking about these children of Israel it's, it's like they had repented he had forgiven them and the blessing was just flowing upon them in verse 30 in verse 30 it says and i will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen and then in verse 35 here he tells us and they shall say the land that was desolate is become like the garden of eden and the waste and the desolate and the ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited as the lord is promising all this is you know he says i will hasten my word to perform it he'll hasten it to perform it in your life in amos chapter 9 amos chapter 9 reading there in verse 14 and verse 15 amos chapter 9 verse 14 and i will bring again the captivity of my people israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the vine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. I will plant them upon their land. 
and it shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I've given them says the Lord thy God uh, the reason the Lord was giving them these promises because uh, they went into captivity now they will come back now they might be afraid uh, maybe they'll go into captivity again maybe they'll be pulled up again maybe they'll be cast out again and the Lord was just promising them that since they had repented and they had obeyed what Joel spoke about in Joel chapter 2 verses 12 to 17 now he will establish them he will plant them and the blessings of the Lord will be permanent upon their lives this is what you'll find all throughout the scriptures that when there is repentance and we stay with the Lord and abide with the Lord the blessings of the Lord they abide they remain in Psalm 72 Psalm 72 verses 6 and 7 it shall calm down like rain upon the moon grass and as showers that water the earth in its days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth he is telling he was telling them how long the, the, their, prom the, the, their promises or the provision of the Lord will stay and remain in their lives in Psalm 132 Psalm 132 verse 5 until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob uh, now in response to what the Lord would do for them they also said we're going to find a habitation for the Lord and uh, it's going to be a stable place where we'll worship the Lord without any molestation at all we come back to Joel chapter 2 we've seen point number one we've seen God's power Point number two, we've seen God's promise. And with the combination of the power and the promise of God that is going to remove the northern army and is going to just lavish upon them nourishing abundance that he was going to give unto them. He now tells them the result of that, that the people of God shall never be ashamed. And the Lord is telling you the same thing as you go through the book of Joel. This is the reason we're studying because those people of Judah, uh, they had already got uh, their own promise fulfilled and then the rest of the people of Judah in coming generations when Christ will come the Lord will turn to the Jews again and he'll fulfill his promises for them but for us today in the inter intervening period this is the period dispensation of the Gentiles these promises are for you they are for every one of us and God's people shall never be ashamed do you believe that that God can so do something in your life that all the abuse, all the insult of the heathen, of the Gentiles, of the unbelievers in your life because maybe you lack this, maybe you don't have this. All those things that say, eh, eh, going to church, eh, reading the Bible, eh, doing evangelism, eh, serving God, working for God. How about this? How about this? How about this? And you have been telling the Lord, oh Lord, see, this is shameful. I'm ashamed. The Lord is saying, all those tears, he'll wipe them away. The shame, he'll carry them away. They will no more be there. The people of God will never be ashamed in Jesus' name. In Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 25. Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which i sent among you the lord said i permitted it it was because uh, the people of judah were, were not living right and therefore he said my great army the locusts the can the canker worm the palmer worm i sent everything to you to devour and to destroy now he says everything will change and you shall eat in plenty verse 26 and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that has dealt wondrously, wonderfully with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. In verse 27, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. He repeats it again. And my people shall never be ashamed. He repeated it so that the people will be assured that uh, the Lord meant it. He was going to roll away all their reproach and all the insult of the Gentiles against them. And I believe what he promised then is going to fulfill today. In Isaiah chapter 29, Isaiah chapter 29, 
I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah 29 verse 22. Therefore thus says the Lord. Who redeemed Abraham. Concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not now be ashamed. Neither shall his face now wax pale. In the next verse, verse 23. But when he seeth his children. The work of my hands. In the midst of him. They shall sanctify my name, honor my name, and sanctify the Holy One of, of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred, that went, as, that went astray in spirit, shall come to understanding. And they that murmured, they that grumbled, they that complained, they shall learn doctrine. As we come back to the Lord, he teaches us his way. He teaches us doctrine. And then he brings understanding unto us. Even though we went astray before and we erred in spirit. And also we didn't have understanding. And we complained and grumbled and murmured. Then he says now, he is going to bring us into such a wonderful spiritual position and state. We'll learn doctrine. We'll not murmur again. And everything will be alright in our lives. In Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 22 and verse 23. Isaiah 49, verse 22. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their hands, in their arms, and their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders have you lost children you'll get them back and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers they shall bow down to thee with their faces toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that i am the lord for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me if you have been waiting upon the lord the answer is about coming he says, the people that have been waiting for him will not be ashamed. All those things you have been praying about, waiting on the Lord for, they have come already. In uh, Isaiah chapter 50, Isaiah chapter 50, reading there in verse 7. For the Lord God will help me, he will help you. Therefore, shall I not be confounded? Therefore, have I set my face like a flint? And I know that I shall not be ashamed. Do you know you will not be ashamed? Do you really, really know you will not be ashamed? The devil is going to be ashamed. In Isaiah chapter 54, Isaiah chapter 54, reading there from verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For, the, for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord has called thee as a woman forsaken. And grieved in spirit. And a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, you are rejected, says the Lord. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. And then he says in a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, everlasting kindness, will I have mercy on thee, says the Lord, thy Redeemer. Here the prophet is picturing for us the blessed effects of the mercy of God and the favor and the blessings of God on the people who had been in great need and in great straits. The divine promise fulfilled now. Their satisfaction will know no bounds. God's plentiful supply of their wants and their full satisfaction will make them acknowledge that God is their father and God is their provider. And over and over and over, the Lord has told his people they will not be ashamed. Look at the promise of God for you before we pray in Psalm 37. Psalm 37, reading there from verse 18. Psalm 37, verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. 
and the inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish. The enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall this, but shall they consume away? It's the, the wicked, uh, those who do not repent, uh, those people that is the sinners, those who are outside Christ, uh, they do not know what they are missing. When they come to the Lord, great are the things that the Lord has promised He'll do for them. In First John chapter two, First John chapter two, verse twenty-four. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Verse 28, And now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Today, we will not be ashamed. Tomorrow, we will not be ashamed. All through our lives will not be ashamed. And if we abide in what the Lord is telling us and teaching us, when he comes, we will not be ashamed. Stand, your, stand on your feet. The Lord will be jealous over you. He will pity you among his people. The Lord will answer you. And then he will say, I will send you corn and wine and oil. He will bless the work of your hand. You will be satisfied. You will no more be a reproach among the heathen. The Lord will remove the north from, far off from you, the northern army. He will drive away all those evil powers, all the principalities and powers, all the things that have tormented you. Fear not, brother. Fear not, sister. Be glad. Rejoice. The Lord will do great things, and the people of God shall not be ashamed. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Thank the Lord for what he has promised you. What he said he will do, the people of God will not be ashamed. Fear not, be glad. Be not afraid, be glad. He remembers you. He remembers you. All the affliction, all the oppression is going to take them away. And that powerful northern army, he will take them far away from you. And you, the people of God, you will not be ashamed. Your family will not be ashamed. Unbelievers tell you, I told you, I told you. Church every time, Bible every time. See it now, see it now. I told you. No, you will not be ashamed. Your relatives tell you, we told you, we told you. Church, Bible, Christ, evangelism, work of God, we told you. See it now. But the people of God will not be ashamed. He will come back to you. He will restore what the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm, what they have eaten. Years of sorrow will end. Years of oppression will end. Sleepless nights will end. Sorrow upon sorrow. At a crossroad. What direction will I take again? I prayed, I fasted, I've done everything. See where I am. It will end. The people of God will never be ashamed. Unbelievers were passed out together. They have made it. They are making it. See me. With all my holiness and with all my righteousness, with all my faithfulness. See me where I am. Don't worry. Don't worry. Fear not. Be glad. Rejoice. A good thing is coming your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Can our God fail? He said, you will not be ashamed. 
Can any dream cancel the promise of God? All the jesting, all the insult, all the temptation, all the things the unbelievers are saying, will that cancel the word of God? You will not be ashamed. Your wife will not be ashamed. Your husband will not be ashamed. Your family will not be ashamed. Better days have come already in Jesus' name. If you believe the promises of God, the Lord has given you tonight, raise up your hand. Accept the promise. Take on the promises. Don't look at the northern army. Don't look at the principalities and the powers. A new day has come for you. The Lord has restored everything that you have lost. Rejoice. 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 Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Be glad. Fear not. Fear not the northern army that you see today. You will not see them again. Your God, your Father, he has, he is married unto you. He has removed the northern army away from you. All the devastation, all the destruction, he has removed everything. Rejoice in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep up your hands as you remember yourself. Remember a dear brother, a dear sister that may not be here this evening. Stand for them as you stand for yourself. That as the Lord is restoring great things, good things unto you. Wherever they are now, the Lord will restore unto them too. After this prayer, don't talk negative about yourself again. Remain in the promises of God. Come out of the problem and stand on the promises. The promises that will never fail. They are for you. You are precious in God's sight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you because you are tender and you remember us. You remember all your children. You said, since you spoke against Ephraim, you still remember him still. You remember us. Lord, we give praises. We give honor. We give adoration unto you. Receive our praises in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, in our passage of study today, you spoke to us. You said you will do great things. You said you'll give us corn. You said you'll give us oil. You said you'll prosper the work of our hand. You said you'll take our reproach away. You said you will answer our enemies who are ridiculing us, reproaching us, saying, where is their God? Oh God, from this night, answer them in Jesus' name. Silence them. All the abuse, all the insults, uh, looking at us as if we're unfortunate because we're serving the Lord, because we're consecrated, we're unfortunate because we're carrying the Bible, because we're following Christ. They say, where is wife? They say, where is husband? They say, where are children? They say, where is job? They say, where there is accommodation? They say, in which way are you physically, are you materially better than us? We don't go to church. Oh Lord, answer them in Jesus' name. Everything that your people have lost, the joy, the provision, the faith they have lost, uh, and your children are walking about with their heads bowed as if they are unfortunate people, as if they are miserable people, as if they are poor people, as if they are jobless people, as if they are orphans, as if they do not have a father in heaven. Oh Lord, roll the reproach away in Jesus' name. Abundant provision, material blessing, the prosperity of the Lord. The promotion of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord. Shower it upon your people in Jesus' name. Lord, how will your people be carrying sicknesses about in their body when Jesus Christ died for them on the cross of Calvary and by the stripes of Christ we are healed. I pray for every brother, every sister here tonight. I pray every yoke will be broken. Every affliction will be taken away. All the sicknesses in their bodies, you have no right to be there. Come out in Jesus' name. By your stripes, O oh Lord Jesus, everyone, every redeemed soul, 
everyone that is born again everyone that comes under the refuge of the lord everyone here tonight they are healed in jesus name lord how is it it's your people that will wake up in the morning and be talking about bad dreams I'm talking about something pressing them. I'm talking about something afflicting them. You said you'll take the northern army away. What are they still doing there? The principalities and powers. What are they still doing there? The power of the enemy. You said you'll be an enemy to our enemies. What are they still doing there? You northern army and you principalities and powers and you evil spirits tormenting the people of God. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. You have no right to touch a child of God. That's the redeemed of the Lord. Stay clear. The anointing of the Lord and the blood of Jesus and the hedge and the protection of the Lord is upon them. Remove your hand in Jesus' name. Lord, prove yourself faithful. That as your people go back home, blessings will meet them on the way. Those who have lost their jobs or those who have been looking for jobs and they have made application or they are still going to make application miraculously. Provide a job for them in Jesus' name. Hey, those who have been trying to get married and time is going and they, and they try and they fail and they try and they fail. Whatever the blockage is, whatever the hindrance is, I remove that hindrance tonight. Remove it in Jesus' name. And those who are married among us and they have not had children, and the people of the world are really telling them, come back, come back, come back. There's no way there. No, this is the way. This is the truth. And this is the life. Oh Lord, as they have come into the gospel, they will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. Lord, those who are here tonight. And those who will hear what we are saying now. This very year, the reproach of barrenness. The reproach, uh, uh, the insult of those some believers saying, uh, where is the child now? Where is the child now? This very year, roll that reproach away in Jesus' name. Lord, everyone here tonight, they will not be ashamed. Before their families, they will not be ashamed. In their places of work, they will not be ashamed. Before fellow believers, they will not be ashamed. Confirm the miracle. Seal the blessing upon your people. Every impossibility in their lives, make it possible. Everything they have asked for, everything they have been running after, they try, they fail, they try, they fail, they try, they fail. Tonight, confirm it, give it to them in Jesus' name. What you said is what we're standing upon. That when you speak, not a Satan not a demon not a witch or wizard can contradict your word that's why we clear all those evil pass away and we spring we, 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 we put the blessings of god upon all your people tonight in jesus name lord let joy fill the hearts of your people let them know they don't have any problems anymore you've taken over their lives are in your hand. You will do good unto them. From now till they see you face to face, they will not be ashamed. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.